Hey guys, Mike here at Amish Tutorials and welcome back. Well guys, today we're going to do a subscriber request as I typically do and this one is for Martin and Martin is uh, creating a game scene and he needs a saw blade, okay? This one is going to be fairly detailed um, so it will probably be used as a transfer model to transfer detail to a low poly but anyway, that's the approach that we're going to take so uh, let's get started, okay? We're gonna take a polygon cube, we're gonna hit R, and we're gonna push it down a bit to make it nice and square. I'll hit F to zoom in so we can see what's going on. Probably something like that, okay? And then we're gonna go into uh, Intro Edge Loop Tool, Option Box, Multiple, and let's do five, and we'll add some subdivision there, okay? Then we're gonna go to our top view and we're gonna right click, go to vertex and let's take these, hit W, start to pull that up then skip one from that end and again skip one and then we'll take these two okay and then we're gonna move in. And from this angle, we're gonna right click at a face. Take these three and go to edit mesh and extrude. Hit W to pull out. Switch back to our top view. And we're gonna start to create this flow here. G to repeat, W to pull out. And we're gonna hit R and we're gonna kind of scale it in a little bit. G to repeat, W to pull out. And hit R and scale it in a bit more. And then hit W and push back a little, okay? We're gonna right click, we're gonna go to vertex on this end. We're gonna take this one and kind of create a flow there. We'll take these two and kind of push that back until this forms almost a straight line, okay? Let's see what we got. Looks about right. And we'll just uh, clean this up a little bit so the line flow is a bit better. We'll just take this and kind of bring that in, okay? Then we're gonna take another cube. We're gonna move that over here. We're gonna hit R to scale it down. Hit W to pull that out. And start to bring that into position. From our top view, we're going to hit 4 for wireframe mode. We're going to hit E to start to rotate that. And hit R to scale it down some more. And we want it to be close to this angle here. Hit F to zoom in. Okay, we're going to hit E to rotate that until we're a little bit closer to where we need to be. Hit W to bring that in. And then we're gonna clean up the vertex flow on this guy. So right click vertex, we'll take that. We'll take that. That looks okay. Okay, not quite there yet. The top section there needs to come down. So right click vertex. Let's bring that in. To about there and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click that object mode come on have to zoom in and hit R and then we're gonna pull it out a little bit like so all right cool 
So we're gonna select this guy, we're gonna right click at a vertex, drag select these bottom vertices, hit W and bring that in to about there. And then we got one section, okay? Now what I wanna do here is um, hit R and kind of pull these out just a little. All right, cool. Then we're gonna right click at object mode. We're gonna select all of this. And I'm gonna hit three to preview smooth so I can see what's going on here. Okay, we need to add some subdivision. If we decide to smooth it out like that, but it's actually not too bad. So we'll leave it like that. We're gonna go to mesh and combine, edit, delete by type history, modify freeze transformations and modify center pivot okay then we're going to hit control d to duplicate w to move over and from our top view we're going to make sure that these two guys touch at the base down there okay then we're going to hit shift d to repeat that and we're going to do that about 30 times so this is three so four five six seven eight nine ten okay so we've got 30 okay i'm gonna drag select all of it go to mesh and combine modify center pivot and then we're going to go up to deform nonlinear, and bend we're going to have a look at how our bend handle is positioned it needs to rotate so hit e hold down j to snap it in sections of 15 degrees and then we're gonna do the same in this direction until we're at 90 and then we're gonna go into our bend handle and see how that will rotate we're at 180 so we've got full circle that looks okay so now we can select it and go to edit, delete by type history, and modify center pivot. So now that we have that section, we can take a, um, let's see, what we'll do is we'll take a um, polygon pipe. We'll just get this guy centered for a sec. Switch to our top view, hit W to move, and hold down V so we can. Yeah, sorry, X, hold down X to snap it to the center. There we go. We're going to take this guy, we're going to add some subdivision to it. Let's do 40. And we're going to hit R to scale that out. There we go. From a thickness point of view, we're going to hit R and push it down. And again, I have to zoom in. And you can see that our blades need to come down, but that's fine. Make that nice and thin. Take this guy from this view, hit W, pull that down, hit 4 for wireframe mode so we can see it correctly. There we go. So we got that so far. But now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna select this guy, go to, uh, let's see, insert edge loop, single. We'll add one right there and one at the bottom. And then we'll get them aligned from our top view by hitting R and bring that in. That's right. And then we're gonna go back to our perspective view. Hit Q on our keyboard. We're gonna right click at a face, click and shift double click and do the same here. And this right here.
go to edit mesh extrude hit R to push down yeah looks all right and then we're going to need a few holes okay for that we're going to use the um, boolean so we're going to take a um, polygon cylinder we're going to do 30 on subdivision let's hit R to scale it in quite a bit and give it some height and hit R to scale it in some more and then from our top view we're going to decide how big we want these holes to be so hit W move that over hit R to scale it up just a little and then we're going to go into our attribute editor and see how far that moved to the left so let's say minus three all right and then what we're going to do is we're going to move the pivot point to the center so we're going to hit the insert key come on let's try it again hit the insert key we're going to hold down x and snap the pivot point to the center then we're going to hit Control d to duplicate e to rotate Hold down J to snap in sections of 15 degrees. We'll do three sections and then we'll hit Shift D to repeat that as we move around. That looks all right. So we got all those. Then we're gonna take this guy and Shift select these guys. Let's see if I'm in object mode here this guy and shift like these guys and go to mesh and boolean and difference and this usually doesn't work and today I'm lucky all right cool all right so that's our blade here so what we're gonna do next is we're gonna drag select all of it we're gonna go to um, let's see we're not gonna go to mesh combine just yet first we're gonna add some material to it so we're going to right click assign new material we'll use a simple lambert and then it doesn't really matter what color i'm going to use because i'm going to use it as a color id map then we're going to take this section here we're going to right click at a face and select that row and that row right click assign new material lambert and we'll choose a different color and we'll do one more for this section. Trying to give me grief because of the Boolean, but that's fine. And we'll do the same down here. Oh, that's good, looks like. Yep. Assign new material, Lambert. there for for wireframe mode so I'm sure that I got all of it yep assign existing material we'll do the same blue and there we go so we got all of that gonna drag select everything in object mode go to mesh and combine we're gonna go to edit delete by type history and now we can select it and go to uh, export selection and we'll call this sprocket FBX and I'll save that on my desktop and now we can jump over to Keyshot. Okay, see you in a bit. All right, guys, here we are. And uh, like I said, I said sprocket. Of course, I mean a saw blade. Uh, so apologies for that. So we're going to go to File. We're going to go to New. And we're going to go to File and uh, Import. So 
So I actually call this sprocket, and again, apologies, it's a saw blade. Okay, here we go. So let's assign some material to this. Uh, we're gonna go to our metals right there. And let's see what we got here. This black is kind of cool, so we'll use that for this section right here. Then, and actually maybe even this one, because that looks kind of industrial. Um, then we are gonna go into the steel section, basic steel. We'll use that for that section. And then we want something that is fairly dark. Um, and let's see what the best approach would be for that. We'll take a polished steel for that section and then I'll double click on it and we'll check that color and let's bring that way down until we almost have black okay so there we go then I'm gonna go into scene select the entire model come on that looks pretty cool okay so I want to have all of this so I'm going to select all of it. Come on. Just uh, give me one sec, guys. Just looking to see whether we need to. Actually, we're good. OK. So um, yeah, we're going to go with the background. We're going to go with the white solid. And then let's go into our environment. And I'm going to go into studio, into my, um, actually, we're going to go into panels, into overhead, and we're going to use this one. OK. Maybe it looks a little bit too shiny here. Let's see if we can fix that with an outdoor, which will maybe look a little bit better. I guess. Just trying to see if the position is what I want. Okay. So as far as the blades are concerned, not bad. Let's go to lighting. We're gonna go to full simulation which looks okay. Then I want to turn off caustics and turn off interior mode. And let's see, we're gonna select the stay above ground. And we are ready to render. So I'm gonna go into render and um, let's see, I'll just uh, save this on my desktop and we'll call this saw blade. We'll set it to 1280 by 720 and 300 DPI, looks okay. So I'm gonna pause, hit render and see you guys in a sec. Okay guys, there you have it. There's our uh, saw blade. I think it turned out okay. So uh, that will uh, help you if you have a modeling challenge like this. And if you got any questions, let me know. I'll help you if I can. And that said, thank you guys for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.